In this video, we're going to talk about how to create an audio amplifier circuit using the LM386 operational amplifier. So here is a block schematic of that device. Pins 1 and 8 are used for gain control. Pin 2 is the inverted input. Pin 3 is the non-inverted input. Pin 4 is connected to ground, which you can also connect it to the negative terminal of the battery. Pin 6, you would connect that to the positive terminal of the battery. Pin 7 is the bypass, which you're going to use if you want to increase the gain of this device. And pin 5 is the output. Now, here's some common LM386 devices. There's the LM386 N-1. There's also the N-3 and also N-4. The N-4 can use a higher supply voltage. With the N-1, the typical supply voltage is around 4 to 12 volts with a maximum supply voltage of 15 volts. With the LM386 N-4, you could use a higher voltage up to uh, 18 volts. Now, here are some other characteristics of the LM386 N1 audio amplifier. The voltage gain represented by AV is typically between 20 and 200. The voltage gain is the ratio of the output voltage to the input voltage. The max input voltage that should be applied to this device is plus or minus 0.4 volts. The bandwidth is 300 kilohertz that's the frequency range over which the op amp will function. The input resistance is 50 kilo ohms. The power dissipation, 660 milliwatts or 0.6 watts. And then you have the maximum operating temperature, negative 65 degrees Celsius on the low end, 150 degrees Celsius on the high end. Now let's draw the audio amplifier circuit. So the first thing I'm going to draw is a triangle. So this is the non-inverted input, and this is the inverted input. Now the non-inverted input, we're going to connect that to a potential meter. The potential meter, we're going to call it R1. And we're going to connect the input signal across the potential meter. Now for those of you who want more information on how to use potential meters and circuits and how they work, Check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to be posting more videos so you can take a look at that. Now connected to the bottom part of the potential meter, we're going to attach that to the inverted input. That is pin 2. The non-inverted input is pin 3. And let's put V in to represent our input signal there. Pin 4 will be connected to ground. And we're going to attach pin 2 to that. And here is the ground symbol. Pin 5 is the output pin. And we're going to couple that to a coupling capacitor, which we'll call C1. Now let's talk about the coupling capacitor before we complete this circuit. The impedance of the coupling capacitor is represented by this equation. It's 1 over 2 pi Fc where F is the frequency, C is the capacitance. So at a frequency of 100 Hertz and given a capacitance of 1000 microfarads, the impedance at this level is going to be pretty low, 1.59 ohms, which is what you want because you want the low frequencies and the high frequencies to pass through this capacitor. As the frequency increases, the capacitive reactance, which is the impedance to an AC signal, that's going to decrease. These two have an inverse relationship. So if we were to increase the frequency to 1000 hertz or 1 kilohertz, keeping C1 the same, the capacitive reactance will decrease to 0.159 ohms. So it's very easy for high frequencies to pass through this capacitor but not so easy for low frequencies to pass through it. 
if we decrease the frequency to 100 hertz, the capacitive reactance will increase to 15.9. So if you want to get a sound with basically a high bass to it, or you want to increase the bass of this output, you want to use a, a high value capacitor. Otherwise, the low frequencies, they're going to have a high impedance, and so they're going to be attenuated by the circuit. So that's why you want C1 to be 1,000 microfarads or more, especially if you don't want to lose amplitude with the low frequency signals. So if you want the speaker to emit a sound with a lot of bass, make sure that C1 has a relatively high value. Otherwise, those low frequency high bass signals, they're going to be attenuated. You're going to hear the high pitch, high frequency signals. So we're going to set C1 to 1000 microfarads. You can use anything higher than that, 4700 microfarads, that'll work very well too. Now connected to C1 will be the speaker, which will then be connected to ground. The speaker that we're going to use is an 8 ohm speaker. Now the load impedance that's recommended for the LM386 audio amplifier op amp is between 4 to 32 ohms. So an 8 ohm speaker is well within that range. And using a high value capacitance, the capacitive reactance will be very, very low. Now one thing that I almost forgot to mention is the purpose or the function of R1, the potential meter. The potential meter is used for volume control. And the way it works is it acts as a voltage divider. It reduces the voltage of the input signal. And so by varying the voltage from 0 to 100 percent, you can adjust the sound level at the output. So that's the function of R1. It's used for volume control. The next pin that we need is pin 6. Now, pin 6, we're going to connect that to the positive terminal of the battery. So that's our supply voltage. And we could use anywhere from 4, but I'm going to use 5. 5 to 12 volts. 5 is a common number. 12 is common, and 9 volts is common as well. So this is a simplified audio amplifier circuit. This particular circuit is designed to have a gain of about 20. Now, you can adjust the gain by using pins 1 and 6. So let me adjust this circuit real quick to make space for those two pins. So this is going to be pin 6. And let's choose a value. Let's use a 9-volt battery. Correction. I think I said uh, we need to adjust pins 1 and 6. I meant to say we need to use pins 1 and 8, which are the pins associated with the gain for the LM386 op amp device. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect a capacitor across pins 1 and 8. And let's call this capacitor C2. And we're going to give it a value of 10 microfarads. So this particular circuit will have a gain of 200. But in order to make sure that we don't have any uh, instabilities in a circuit, we need to add another capacitor. And that capacitor will be connected between the ground and pin 7, which is the bypass pin. We'll call that C3, which you could use a range of values for that. So let's give it a value. Let's use 100 microfarads. Anytime you want to increase the gain from 20 to something higher, like 200, you need to put a capacitor between the bypass pin and the ground. So that's how you can increase the gain of the LM386 audio amplifier circuit. OK, let's get rid of some stuff so we can talk about some other stuff. Now. This particular op amp can be used as an oscillator. 
So if you want to use it as an audio amplifier and reduce oscillations so you don't have too much distortion, one way in which you can do that is by adding a capacitor coupled to a resistor. Let's call this R2 and C2. R2, we're going to give it a low value of 10 ohms. Now C2, we want this to be a low value, let's say 0.1 microfarads. We don't want frequencies in the audio range to be filtered to the ground, but high frequencies that are well above the audio range, we do want to pass that to ground. So the audio frequency spectrum is between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. So using a low value capacitor, you can filter out signals that are like one megahertz or 100 kilohertz. But also, if you want to increase the bass that is heard by the speaker, you can increase C2. Let's say if you were to use a one microfarad capacitor. The higher frequencies in the audio range, like 10 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz, they're going to be filtered out, whereas the low frequency signals will pass to the speaker. So this is one way in which you can increase the bass that is heard at the output speaker, is by slightly increasing C2. Not too much, but a little. So you could try values between 1 microfarad and 10 microfarads, and then just listen to how the speaker sounds. And if you want to, you may also adjust R2 as well. So that's another way in which you can not only reduce distortion from high frequency signals, but also increase the bass of the sound that's heard by the speaker. Now, another way in which you can adjust the bass that's heard by the speaker is by using pins 1 and 5. So this is another bass boost feature of this circuit. So we're going to use a potential meter and a capacitor. So let me move this number. So I'm going to put that number here. We'll call this resistor R3. That is a potential meter. We're going to use a 10 kilo ohm potential meter. This pin here of the potential meter is not being used. And C3, I'm running out of space here, C3 is going to have a capacitance of 0 0.033 microfarads. So that's how you can adjust the base of this audio amplifier. Now, going back to the gain of this circuit, we mentioned that we can increase the gain to 200 by connecting a capacitor between pins 1 and 8. If you wish to adjust the gain from 20 to 200, here's what you can do. So like before, we're going to connect pin 1 to a capacitor. And then we're going to connect it to a potential meter, which will be using only two of the three pins of the potential meter. And then instead of connecting it to pin 5, we're going to connect the potential meter to pin 8. So by coupling the capacitor between pins 1 and 8 with a resistor, we can adjust the gain from 20 to 200. If we simply use a capacitor, we can make the gain up to 200. And don't forget to put the capacitor between the bypass pin 7 and the ground in order for this to work. So we can call this C4 and R4. And of course, you can adjust the values of that. So let's make C4 10 microfarads. And then R4, we're going to use 10 kilo ohms. So you can vary that anywhere between 0 and 10 kilo ohms. And thus, you can adjust the gain between 20 and 200 uh, using C4 and R4. So that's basically it for this circuit. So you have R1, which can be used for volume control. You know how to use the capacitors to adjust the base of the circuit, and you could use C4 and R4 to adjust the gain of the audio amplifier. So that's basically it for this video. For those of you who want more videos on electronics and circuits, feel free to check the links in the description section below, 
and thanks again for watching.